And we are back. Live brush for Ray and Tyler. Hey. And we are back. Live brush yeah. for Ray and oh, that's Tyler. Good. I like and we are back. Yeah. Directed yeah. and produced yeah. by oh, Kay that's good. Welch. Cha 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 cha. <laughs> oh, there man. it is somebody somebody we make got a mix two theme songs we have two theme songs now incredible well welcome both, back everybody both done by me both done by ray this is the ray sing hour he's going to be making <laughs> music he did do our other theme song i mean it's amazing and i i think i know how to tap to most kind of a beat but not really a good beat so that's about my instrumentation abilities um, but anyways, I digress. Welcome back, everybody, to our special, I guess, what do we want to call this, two-part? It's, it's um, this weekend is Lightbox Expo, everybody. Um, so if you've come to us through Lightbox, welcome. If you've never seen us do our little stream before. Um, and get ready. And get ready for us to paint on our tombstone paintings and talk about art, talk yeah. shop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Lightbox is this awesome um, expo that, um, this would be year two of it, but it's all online this year for obvious reasons. And um, it was put together by Bobby Chiu and Schoolism and uh, last year, it was down in Pasadena, amazing event. Um, it was kind of like, I don't know if folks out there have been to Spectrum or um, IllixCon, um, but it was like a very art-centered expo or convention. Um, it had lots of industry folks and just wall-to-wall -wall artists, just everyone I've ever really heard of in the industry was there. So now we're all here online and most of us are streaming throughout the weekend. So, um, and then the Lightbox website, which is um, lightboxexpo.com has an artist alley, a virtual artist alley, and it has a whole list of events, um, people's talks. And so um, go on there and check it out. Um, I think the, you just have to pay like a dollar or something to get in and register. And that lets you see everything that's on the site. Um, but just tons of amazing people in the industry, all streaming like we're streaming right now. And we're gonna stream today and tomorrow so we're doing like a special thing for um, Lightbox. Wow. All right, welcome That's everyone. Awesome. Wow, welcome everyone. Uh, hello everyone, if for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ray Bonilla. Uh, I am a fine artist and illustrator working out of Buffalo, New York. And uh, uh, Tyler and I uh, started uh, this stream uh, show Tyler and I and Kate uh, started this dream show to uh, basically as a way of uh, really hanging out and also being able to part, uh, share some of our knowledge of, of art and across different sort of themes and everything like that and talk about um, uh, our approaches and similarities and differences and um, and overall just have a ton of fun. So uh, I think you're in for a special treat, man. We, Tyler, we lined this up perfectly. I just want to say tombstone light box. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. That's made in heaven folks. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so welcome. It's going to be a good time. I uh, hope everyone's in for a wild ride because we're going to be painting yeah. the crap out of these paintings. Yeah. I've I already told uh, Kate that I'm painting the hell out of this thing. So yeah. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, if you are just, uh, if this is the first time you've seen these paintings, uh, they're uh, basically we both uh, decide on themes uh, where we uh, we just paint. For, for now, we've been painting portraits and our theme has been the kind of like 80s uh, action heroes, you know, from the movies that we loved. And uh, our first one was, uh, I did uh, uh, Deckard from Blade Runner and yeah, Tyler, yeah. Tyler did a Ripley from Aliens. Oh, or you know what? I should the because, first or the second because we era. got new folks. I didn't. Yeah, well, you had we to show that because back then we were sticking to you know way back then to the pilot episode. 
we were sticking hard to um 80s yeah. now we're doing tombstone which is about 93 94 Play. still That's true. It's true. Wherever wherever Terminator 2 was, that was still the 80s in my book. Um, so this is Ripley I did from the first few episodes. Awesome. Here she is dancing around. Um, but now we're doing Tombstone stuff, man. Yeah. One of my yeah. favorite Westerns. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I am uh, from Queens, uh, New York, originally. Uh, I went to undergrad at um, a state school in New York called uh, Fredonia. And I did my uh, grad work uh, in a, uh, uh, a place called the Academy of Art University in San Francisco. And so, uh, and that's where uh, Tyler and I uh, met. And so now I moved back to Buffalo and uh, here is where I work. I, I do mostly, I've done work for, um, you know, uh, editorial publications such as like Savoir Magazine and The New Yorker and a uh, bunch of other stuff. And uh, now I've been uh, mostly doing a lot of gallery painting, um, showing at places like uh, Abend Gallery in Denver, uh, My Bomb Gallery in uh, East Aurora, and uh, been lucky enough to have a couple of shows, a uh, show at um, one, one show at the Arcadia Gallery in uh, Los Angeles. So, bucket list, but, man, bucket list. What, Arcadia. what about you, Tyler? Um, I am Tyler Jacobson. Hello, everybody. Um, I also went to the Academy of Art with Ray. So we first, you know, cracked the, cracked the crust of the earth, they say. Do they say that? That's not a saying now. Well, it's a saying now. And um, yeah, so, um, and then I went into, well, we both went into illustration right away. And, and I have stuck deep into fantasy illustration is where I am now and having a good time with that. And I don't know, what, what's the rest of my bio? What's the rest of, what happened to me? Who am I? Uh, uh, um, well, we're here and you painted Ripley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I painted Ripley. That's it, that's my whole career. And you really like Tombstone. Um, <laughs> and I love movies. And yeah. we'll occasionally I digress movies. on this to talk about movies. <laughs> I like films. I like films. So yeah, that, I mean, that's the short of it. But um, Ray and I had a great time in school together and we wanted to keep that going by reminiscing about the things we learned. We're going to mention a lot of teachers that we had Just the over one. and over again. Just Bill Mond. <laughs> We're going to try and mention more. Um, but yeah, so I guess should we roll in on this? We're getting we're getting going. We're starting in. Yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah. The, get um, that painting rolling. Okay. We'll okay. So Tyler, how, how are you? Uh, what, what are you painting on and with? Okay. So I am painting in oils again. I'm going to have to oil out to get back into this painting. Um, but I am painting a portrait of Val Kilmer from Tombstone as the legend, Doc Holliday. Um, some say so, yeah, I'm just going with oils. <laughs> Wasn't there a, a Michael J. Fox movie where he was like Dr. Ho Doc Hollywood or something like that? Anyway. I don't, I don't um, know. <laughs> okay, I'm painting <laughs> oils. <laughs> Everybody, we're painting in oils. I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep going. Maybe I'll finish this this time. I thought I'd kind of gone through it pretty quick on the last episode. Yeah. Just a race with Ray. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. So we have a theme in the show that I'm a really slow painter uh, because Tyler always paint, finishes his paintings uh, live and I always have to uh, like a, a hack, finish it off camera. Uh, you yeah. Know, where all of the, well, I, where I use all of the secrets of painting. So yeah, it's almost uh, like you're hiding something. You yeah. Know, yeah. Not really letting anyone see it until after you've done this, the secret <laughs> touch in the workshop. <laughs> Hey, Tyler, do you want to hear a compliment from the chat? Oh, yeah, please. Uh, they love your beard. No, Kipling, under nobody likes your beard. <laughs> Kipling underscore art says, just want to shout out to Tyler really quick. At Lightbox last year, I was at your booth, and you urged me to show you my portfolio and get out with it. And it really helped me not feel like an outsider in the business. You were incredibly genuine, oh, and it meant a lot. Thanks again. That's oh, awesome. Thank you. That's, That's really awesome. Nice. And welcome to this stream. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I hope it's going well out there with you. You know, it's always scary shopping your portfolio around and very nerve wracking. Um, but, you know, the more you do it, uh, the more you get used to just presenting your work. And I'm glad totally. it's going good. That's fantastic. Totally. totally. Uh, that, that being said, you being this is your first show, uh, you're new to this. Um, there's a rule. We, we don't compliment Tyler. We, we try yeah. not to address him or talk to him. It's pretty much Kate and I that really drive this show. We carry so. it pretty hard, they, yeah. They keep it together. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I was just... Oh, I'm sorry you walked into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, welcome, though. Uh, oh, gosh. Uh, okay, so, so, oh, so what yeah, are you doing, Ray? Ray's got, Ray's got more of an illustration going, which is awesome. Yeah, so I'm, I'm painting. I, I basically started an underpainting where I lift it out using gouache. Um, and I've been going over opaquely uh, with acrylics. And uh, I'm painting on like a, uh, basically a piece of cardboard that I mounted uh, a drawing to that I did digitally. Uh, and, uh, and I mounted it with matte medium, uh, really similar, almost identical probably to the way uh, uh, Donato Giacola does uh, mounts his stuff or prepares his paintings. Uh, so check him out. Is he doing white box? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, okay. Yeah, I thought so. I saw a thing earlier that he, he should have a booth um, in the artist alley. I don't have a booth in the artist alley this year for my own negligence, but um, he should have one. And yeah, check out his stuff. Like Ray said, he's amazing. Yeah. That was awesome. And so, uh, yeah, now I'm just going over basically with glazes uh, using uh, matte medium, um, uh, specifically this Windsor Newton map medium continuing uh, that, the Windsor Newton commercial that is this yeah <laughs> podcast <laughs> they might they might be watching now so you know yeah. I just got <laughs> find look at sponsor money oh yeah, yeah, the yeah massive sponsorship opportunities here yeah, hey, yeah from Windsor and Newton we've got a, a question that well, you guys may have answered it before but we've got all these new viewers so, yeah, oh yeah. Well, uh, away. From Evacuate, do you have a preference for subjects to paint, i.e., portraits, still life, landscapes? Uh, and if so, what makes it your preference? That's a good question. Happy answer. I don't think we've actually, if we have answered it, I like answering it again. That's a good question. Good. Um, so, so I, I, I don't know about Tyler. I, I'm pretty sure we're almost on the same page with this, but um, you know our education really uh, caused us to fall in love with like every single type of subject matter. And so it was like still life landscapes, figures, portraits, all, you know, uh, pretty much equally. Tyler and I really enjoy uh, uh, head painting, you know, portraiture, yeah. just because all of our favorite painters are the great portrait artists uh, of, you know, Western art. And so, uh, it's always a lot of fun because uh, we love the idea of capturing like a likeness of someone, you know, to, to be to be able to like say like, wow, that's this person you've captured this individual. And um, so, yeah, but I, I think that each uh, each subject has its own thing, you know, that, that really draws you to it. Uh, so I, I I change every every day. Like I'm working on a landscape upstairs, and um, in my uh, in my oil painting studio. And, um, you know, I love painting landscapes, you know, just to be able to capture the essence of a place, you know? So uh, I think as illustrators, since we had an illustration background, I, I think you kind of fall in love with all sorts of, uh, you know, uh, subject matter. I don't know, what do you think, Tyler? I kind yeah, of spoke I mean, I, no, I totally, I totally agree. I, I, you know, our training, we, school, we kind of were taught to be to be illustrators we had to be able to paint anything which i still think holds true like if you want to be an illustrator you really got to learn how to paint anything um but i think um and i still do enjoy the challenge of trying to paint everything that there is right but i think i, I like doing these kinds of things because i'm so used to um you know i imagine Ray, you're doing the same thing right we're, we're both used to sort of tackling these really complex compositions with lots and lots of complicated colors and they're really challenging pieces in our day-to-day -day work. Um, but these on the stream, these are, we're trying to show 
I, for me, it's just it's a simpler challenge for me to do this just this simple portrait. All right. And I like that it's almost meditative and relaxing to me. So uh, totally. Totally. I don't know if I have a favorite, but I do like these moments where I can kind of just relax and all I have to do is worry about getting the structure of the space right. And um, I don't have to um, juggle a whole bunch of different things at once for this. And, and I also think it's a great way for us to communicate concepts while we're chatting and having a good time. Yeah. Um, catching up essentially. Yeah, we haven't we haven't talked since last show, right? Yeah, it's been a fucking crazy week. Um, the, the whole the whole state over I mean the whole West Coast on my side is on fire. Um, can't even look out the windows without looking into like I think we can see like I don't know five feet down the block. It's um, so that's going on, and we've been pretty busy with work, so it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah, we haven't chatted since. I don't think yeah, the last show, man. Yeah, last show. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's hey, cold here. We've got uh, another question. I love hearing about the respective weather. We can get back to that. But EJ Manual 3 says, Ray, you talk about portrait painters and landscape painters, but do you have a specific painter that is your inspiration? And you don't have to say Tyler, um, but. I mean, you should. Dude. You should acknowledge me. <laughs> well, uh, I want to thank EJ Manual. Uh, three from c coming in the chat first. Uh, second, uh, portrait painters. I've got a bunch of them uh, that I really like. Uh, if I had to pick one, I guess well, that's hard. Um, maybe John Singer Sargent. Uh, oh, man. I mean, like, you can't go wrong with him um, because he's just, you know, one of the best that ever lived and um, uh, dangerously and good. Yeah, just like an incredible artist who was able to capture a, a likeness and an essence of an individual with uh, very few strokes, you know, very efficient uh, or an economic manner. You know, what I mean by efficient economic, I just mean like being able to place brush strokes down, and you know, he never wasted a brush stroke, and uh, that's something for me to aspire to because it it's it it takes a lot of work. It, it, it I mean. It took him forever to do things a lot of times, but uh, he made it seem super easy. And I think that's, um, he embodies kind of what I look, uh, I'm drawn to is like kind of the illusion of like spontaneity and effortlessness and um, fresh, freshness, I guess you would call it, right? Instead of effortlessness, it looks effortless, but. That's what I like, I'm glad you mentioned that about his work because it's, it's like, you can tell. I think. I think you. You might remember when we were at the Met Ray and we were looking at that one um, painting of his, the uh, Madame. Madame Max, yeah. She's a, yeah. The black. She's got the black dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like yeah. Ray and I were, were the only people there in the museum, sort of like leaning really hard to the right so that we could see the glare come off it. Oh my God, because Tyler! You, you're just giving on me, her face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, but like ahead. just on her face, it's like. There's, you can see there's so much paint that he he worked and reworked that face a million times to get his spontaneity like and like to make it look like it was just effortlessly done with just right. a few strokes. But you could see that just on the face area of the painting, it was it was like super thick um, but smooth, like he had wiped it off or he had painted over it. But everywhere else, you could see the canvas texture coming through. So it was like you, we could tell that he had worked so hard in that one spot on the painting. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, like, oh, it was a fun time, maybe for you, but for me, I was stressed <laughs> out because when Tyler says oh. we were both close to the paintings, it was really Tyler. He, I can't tell you how many times he almost touched, like, you know, four hundred year old paintings, you know, and yeah. uh, I almost got kicked was, out. Man, and they was were yelled following at, me. Oh my God, man. You know, they yeah. must have had me on the radio because they were following me. And oh, yeah. They were watching yeah. me in every room after that. Too close, too close. Like, we got a, we got this fucking guy in gallery <laughs> two that's almost touching every painting. <laughs> Pardon my French, everyone. If it's a family show, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. We're multilingual in this uh, uh, stream. <laughs> so uh, sometimes we switch in and out of uh, lang other languages. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, love, 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 yeah. 
our uh, currently our only VIP, Aaron Rufino, is here in the chat uh, and it says, "Can't wait to take your head painting class through Visual Arts Passage, Ray." Oh, yeah. oh, sweet, sweet! I'm glad oh, that you're on board. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'm. Uh, uh, thanks, Aaron, for for signing up. Uh, I'm teaching a. Uh, it just got announced this week uh, a head painting class. Uh, it's called Head Painting from Paint to Pixel uh, for uh, Visual Arts Passage, which is a great Good online title, man. Uh, art title. school. Is that your title? Yeah, man. You know how I go. Dude, wordsmith. Yeah. I even got a, a theme song. But, you know. <laughs> uh, so, sing, yeah, sing it's, it. it's a lot of fun. No. Not yet. I already, I already you know, I don't want to no, oversell the, for this, this episode and put it so high up in quality for these new Lightbox viewers that you know, the next one, they're, they're going to be utterly disappointed and gutted. And then we just lose <laughs> it. You know. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I cut you off, but keep, keep plugging it. Plug it. No, yeah, no. Class. So uh, it's a, it's a uh, class uh, that explores uh, head painting and uh, different ways of doing it. And it, I use head painting as a kind of what we're doing here as a, 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 a basis to teach different approaches. Uh, that all uh, fall under the same type of thinking uh, method, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, and it's re pretty much predicated on, here we go. Uh, there should be like a, a, like oh, a ding Jesus. sound. Uh, ding, 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 ding. Uh, what, what we uh, were taught by Bill, you know, from Bill Mon. Uh, so um, one of our, one of our mutual mentors. Uh, so shout out to Bill Mon. Always. I feel like, uh, you know, folks who are new to this show, we mentioned Bill a lot. And yeah, I do think we have to have him on here somehow. We got to figure out how to do it. I know he's, he may not be a tech dude, but we'll, if we have to fly to Utah, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll fly to Utah. Hey, well, fly, if you want to sit, I'll fly to Utah. Perfect. If, you, if you're interested in us flying to Utah to do a special live brush, consider subscribing. Press F in the chat. Yeah. Um, Press F in the chat. So, a couple of things from the chat. Uh, Howard Lyon Art is in the chat. Says hey, Tyler, Howard, and, and says, Tyler. And then uh, we have a great question from Corbin Hubler, who says, "Hello, I'm a huge fan of both of your work. Tyler's work is a major inspiration for me. It's so cool to see how what? both of you work and your process." Quick question: you. Once you've put together a portfolio, should you put it out online and wait for companies to contact you, or should you go out and contact companies even if you don't know if they are looking for illustrators? never wait get out never there um, Just, yeah. do not yeah do not wait around for people to contact you because th they may never contact you you gotta you gotta um get out there and show them your work it's the, the, uh, you gotta think of it the um i guess the best way to think about it is you may not know what they're seeing so just get stuff in front of them because maybe they missed you somehow on on all the various sites that are around and maybe you're exactly what they were looking for. So it's always great to, um, to, to just charge forward and show them your work. Couldn't have uh, wait around. said any better, man. Yeah, just yeah. go, get it out there. I mean, like I, you know, one of the galleries I had showed uh, with, uh, you know, I had always wanted to, to show with them for years and i just thought like oh maybe my work would be good enough that it'll catch their eye and stuff and it never happened you know and all i did was emailed them and presented my work and i you know and made sure i was as super as professional as possible and uh and they were like yeah we love your work we've been following you for for a long time now so you know they had known i existed but was waiting for me to pull the trigger so a lot of times you know that happens uh, as well um, yeah, there's lots of assumptions that may be made outside of your knowledge. Um, right. So it's it's always better to just speak. Another question from the chat from Chappie Mick Chapman for Tyler: What made oh. you paint the recent Jace mirror image piece at such a large a large scale? And do you guys ever want to create really large pieces like Bierstadt size? Um, I've always wanted to do something really large, but um, I, let me address, I guess, that first part of the question. Um, the reason I went so big was uh, I've had a friend of mine, Chris Ron, who's bugged me for years to paint Chris Ron. original. Chris Ron, shout out to Chris. Amazing painter. Check out his work. 
Um, and also to plug back to um, Howard, check out Howard Line. Yeah, oh my God, well. Howard's, He's Howard's insane. Two, two powerhouses we're talking about here, folks. Howard, so, feel um, free to drop your uh, any links that people might be interested in the chat. Yeah, please, Howard. Um, no, if he awesome. does that, everyone's just going to leave and go with Howard. <laughs> That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> But um, okay, us. so yeah, so yeah, we just drop out. See you guys. See ya. Um, so so Chris Chris bugged me for years to get get into um original magic pieces, and because I'd worked in magic digitally for quite a long time, mm -hmm. and so I I I don't know. It was like middle of last year. I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm going back in because I had painted and I'd done illustration and oils for. I don't know, seven years, I think, at that point. Um, so I was like, I'm going back in. And I did a couple paintings at like 18 by 24 for Magic. And Chris was talking to me and he was like, man, if you paint bigger, you, you don't have to use tiny brushes. You can use bigger brushes. I was like, okay, that does seem easier. Because um, then I can stand back from the painting. And then, I mean, the other flip side of that is the aftermarket sales for Magic are really big. And people like large paintings. The collectors like large paintings. So I went 24 by 36 and it almost killed me. Uh, it, was, it was a mistake halfway through. I was like, this was a huge mistake. I have so much ground to cover on this painting. Um, but that, cause that was I had painted a 24 by 36 since art school, I don't think. Um, and I had to do it in what, two weeks or something. So it was challenging, but um, I had a lot of fun with it. Ray's painting big paintings like that all the time. I was like, Jesus. Not oh, easy. It. It's not easy. I would love a Bierstadt type of, uh, to do a Bierstadt painting uh, like that scale. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it just, you know, it all kind of boils down to like, you know, spending, I mean, something like that would take me like a year, you know, uh, of, of planning and a year of painting and, you know, at least, you know, and so some of those like, Remember those um, Eli Rippin paintings that were like, he spent like a decade on this piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, oh my God. You know, Rippin was like incredible. Yeah. And I, I mean, obviously I know how big a Bierstadt painting is. I'm just testing to see if you guys know. How big are we talking for a Bierstadt painting? <laughs> talking like, some of them are like 10 feet. Uh, yeah. by, I mean, like they take up entire rooms. Uh, like there was... You know, you, you, I saw a whole bunch of three of them that were like, you can only fit three in one room. Uh, and it was a gigantic, in a gigantic museum. I think it was like in DC or something like that, um, where the Met, um, they're, they're pretty large. I don't have actual figures, uh, or I should say, I know the figures, how long they are, but Tyler, how, how, how large are they are exactly? Uh, I don't know, to be honest. Um, yeah. I remember- Hey, and I do. This, that, <laughs> Uh, I failed. I failed. Um, I don't really know. I know they're big. I mean, I remember looking yeah. at some of the stuff, but you know, sometimes it's metric. I'm like, come on, I'm not going to do the conversion on this. <laughs> Forever. Here's for all our new viewers. Uh, Tyler regularly alienates the rest of the world. Um, so I saw a oh Anubis underscore artist on Twitch says, "Hey Tyler, student from AAU here. AAU, hey. AAU, nice. heart you." How's it going nice. at AAU? Nice. Welcome to the stream. Our, yeah, I wonder. Our... I mean, you know, we occasionally run into folks that are that are just gotten out of AAU, or um, you know, but, and I'm always interested in hearing their experience because we had a you know unique experience there, and you know things change, and I'm always sometimes I'm like, oh, that's different now, or oh, they don't have that yeah. class anymore. Um, but I'm always interested in hearing how it's still going there. Also, check in with Chuck every once in a while. Yeah. Also, Chuck Powell owns a, owes us a lot of money, and so we've yeah. been trying to track him yeah. down. You know. Yeah. You know, every time he, he's he's <laughs> wily, man. <laughs> you, Shout out to Chuck Powell. You, you guys uh, <laughs> weren't kidding about Howard Lyons art. Whoa. Oh yeah, Howard's fantastic. Holy. You, had, you checking out his work? You said we said we said not to click on the link. Yeah, I'm. I listen, guys. You got this right. I'm gonna just. All right. All, all right. right. See you later. We'll keep talking. Well, welcome to the final <laughs> episode of Live Rush. Presented. And I gotta by give Howard. a lot of them. 
<laughs> I got to give a lot of credit to Howard because I, I recently did um, a visual development project with Howard at Wizards of the Coast for Magic. And I think I spent half the time just picking his brain on, on like studio tech and, and, you know, talking shop about paintings. Cause he, oh he helped God, me, yeah. he got me into these like special filters well, that I have over my lights and my lights. lenses. Yeah. Yeah. Which Howard, I, we're it's using like a them. magic trick. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 Howard, I told Ray, I don't know if you're still in the chat, but I told Ray and now Ray and I are both using them. Um, it's a game changer. Just like this instant removing glare and bringing out all the matted colors. Um, gosh, we could dig into this for, we should probably dig a whole episode out um, later and, and talk about all this stuff. There's so right. much. Why don't you just go to Howard's stream or his website <laughs> and just ask him. <laughs> Yeah, let's go hang out with Howard. <laughs> yeah, Kate's sending all the traffic there. Yeah, I know. It's like we now are. At... We have we have seven viewers, but they're very engaged, and one of them is Howard. Um, <laughs> Tyler, question from Kipling underscore Art. Tyler, can I ask oh. why you smoothed out the shadow on the left part of the face? Was there a method um, to that simplification? Yeah. So. It's there was a method. There's a, the choice I was making was um, there was a lot too much detail and busyness and noise going on in the shadow over there, and I felt like it was competing with the focus that I kind of want over on this side of the portrait. So I, I've sort of flattened out the shadow into one value, or mostly one value, so that it's not as it's not as competing. There was a lot going on over there, too much. Um, so I just wanted to simplify it if that makes sense that made, that made a lot of sense uh Ray, of sense. ej manual is very insistent on this topic so i'm just gonna bring it up okay. uh okay. ray now we know your inspiration for portraits and landscapes and we know you are a borderline professional singer can you sing oh, yeah. us your favorite song from Sudi suny fredonia uh, geez. In the improv uh, world, this is called pimping. Raising it, yeah, pimped yeah, right I'm now. I'm getting pimped <laughs> right now. No, it's not safe for stream. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. the, the the song of your alma mater is not safe yeah, for stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! See, we both is had um. I, this is like another completely separate like subject but we both had interesting undergrads like I went to um, Gonzaga University um, and got like this very loose art education and after that I was like I got to learn more about this because I, I was mostly like ceramics and printmaking when I was at Gonzaga and start off as man, bio I, right and I yeah I was a bio major at first I'm a big I love science um, still do but uh, Dr. Tyler profession not for me <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's my other name. I don't even have a PhD. <laughs> F in the chat, if you think it's uh, immoral and wrong to uh, practice without a uh, medical degree like Tyler's doing. <laughs> that's fine in some we countries. Gonna, should uh, we make t-shirts someday for, with the say F in the chat? Yeah, we yeah, should. We will. Definitely. Don't worry. I'm on right. it. Hey, Ray, a question from, hold on. Let me scroll back up for a second. Perrier underscore gray. Is Ray a fan of, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, Dudash? Oh, uh, see you're talking about like, see Michael yeah, CM, CM Dudash. Yeah, man. He's, Dudash. he's awesome, man. He's awesome. Great, uh, great, uh, illustrator at first. And he's, he's done mostly like uh, Western art now, uh, recently. Um, mm -hmm. have you ever seen my, Michael Dudash's work? Uh, I think a little bit. It's, um, yeah, he had this like, if I had a weakness, it would be that I can never remember names. But if I saw the art, I'd probably be like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah. He, he's like, he's another one. Like if you ever, we, we had mentioned Bernie Fuchs at the, uh, in the last stream oh. about lift out and, uh, uh, Michael Dudash was one of the like artists who, who kind of came from that tree of like thinking like the lift out he turned it into his, his own thing. Um, really, really cool stuff. Uh, you should definitely check it out on YouTube. I think there's a, a, um, a video of him making a workshop at this like uh, old school uh, art school. It was in LA. It was like a trade school. It was called um, Art and Associates. I think it was called that uh, Mark Westemo uh -huh. ran. And that sounds um, familiar. 
Yeah, it's like him and he had a special guest, uh, Tyler. And do you know who that special guest was? Take a wild um, guess. Okay, yeah, special uh, guest artist, illustrator. Was it Thomas Blackshear? Thomas it Blackshear. was Thomas Blackshear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, folks, if you're new to this, which it seems like a lot of folks are, Ray and I absolutely love Thomas Blackshear yeah. and everything he's ever done. So um, just putting that there, just leaving that there. From Nito underscore Re, do you approach digital illustration slash painting the same way you would do traditional? For example, all in one layer, low opacity glazes, and uh, would love to know more about how the two mediums combine. Um, that's a great question. Um, this could lead us into an awesome rabbit hole of things to talk about. I actually, I do approach my digital, so I trained in oils originally. So right. all my digital work was just, as I was getting into it, um, as I started in oils, and most of my work um, right out of school for um, illustration work was, in oil. So it was, as I transitioned digitally, I was trying to figure out how to do it. And all I had, the only mindset I had was um, oil painting. So it was just me finding the tools that were available um, in Photoshop that looked like oil painting effects. So um, I still, to this day, I approach all my digital paintings in a very similar way. I've found some like little things over the years that um, kind of feeds, uh, I guess, like speed up the process, but it is still like versions of oil painting that I'm finding, like, you know, multiply layer is like a glaze. So it's darkening it. Um, I guess, I mean, there, there are other analogies. I mean, overlay sort of doesn't really have an analogy when it comes to, that's sort of one of the tricks, I guess, is a, is a really nice overlay layer does a lot more than any anything you could do with an oil painting. But um, there's just a lot of things that translated and I used those as I moved along. But yeah, so I, I still think in the same terms. We were also kind Whatever. of trained to think like that. I mean, we, we were, uh, you know, Bill had uh, told us like, think about it as steps. You know, there's a drawing phase, there's a uh, establishment of a value pattern. Uh, there's, uh, you know, do you want to, there's a color phase, uh, do you want to handle it both at the same time, value and color? Okay, you could do more direct. You know, how do you want to put your drawing down? Do you want to do it with a pencil, a brush, uh, you know, a crayon, uh, pastel? It doesn't matter. Like what what's what matters is the the goal that you're trying to set. You know, what problem are you trying to solve? And so, um, oil painting, uh, literally, uh, what Bill would do is he would show us, you know, how to basically build a painting in oils. And then other classes that we had, he was like, hey, remember that thing that we did in, in oil painting? Well, here's the acrylic and color pencil version of it. Here's the mm -hmm. gouache version of it. Here's the, you know, so on and so forth. And it caused us to think about the mediums basically just being whatever, as long as it's compatible, they're really just steps. And, and so in digital painting, that's literally, I mean, the same steps that we, we, we take, you know, there's, drawing uh there's value uh, and then uh there's color and the paint application is i mean i apply paint the same way i would apply uh paint in, in oils with the brush you know um i'm thinking the same way i'm thinking about structure and i'm thinking about um you know the form i'm thinking about my composition i'm thinking about uh you know color temperature all of that stuff is medium agnostic uh and so um yeah exactly so that's that's the reason why it's it's no no difference uh, for us. Okay, it's a great question. It is a great question. Oh my gosh, we have so many questions right now. First, Sick. first, I just want to I want to announce the humble brag uh, from Howard Lyon in the chat that he owns two of Thomas Blackshear's studies. Oh, what? you told me about this, Howard. I told Ray about the the one that you own the with the Howard's got one that has a bunch of Thomas's like experiments where he put like the clear plastic over it and then like painted in the area oh yeah to, to, to make big, big adjustments but he tested it out on um what, what would you call that stuff the, the that's that clear plastic stuff um it's anyways, like a, yeah like my i was very jealous yeah. a lucite yeah. or acetate 
Yeah, yeah, yes, Tate. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I, Howard, I was telling Ray, and Ray was freaking out about it. Yeah. Thanks, like Howard. Like he's right now. <laughs> Thanks, Howard, again. I know, right? Okay, so Anubis underscore artist asks, question for the both of you. Earlier, I saw an artist use turpentine with their oil paint to create a glaze. I've been told turpentine was bad for the paint for a painting's longevity. Basically, is turpentine actually okay to use? Um, I mean, I, I don't, I can't speak, Ray, you can probably speak to its archival nature, but um, yeah, like we yeah. used to use um, turpenoid in school all the time because it evaporates really quick. Um, so it's great for that kind of um, glazing because it's, um, you know, it, it's, it kind of speeds the drying and you can get it really thin because it's a solvent. I try not to use too many solvents, to be honest, because they're pretty poisonous. So, Yeah, and also, I mean, it's, it's not recommended because um, you think about it like soup. Uh, it's like uh, if you want to uh, extend the soup, uh, you can add a little bit of water, but you don't want to add too much water because it'll kind of break down. And that, that's what happens to paint pigment when you add too much uh, turpentine to it. You, it. It really weakens the paint film on it. And it's usually only an issue when you're glazing on top of multiple layers. Uh, it could be prone to cracking because especially on a flexible support, if, you're, if it's like on canvas that's stretched, you know, it's constantly contracting and expanding. So uh, you combine that with like a weak uh, bunch of thin down uh, glaze layers that were just thin down with turpentine, then and that's what you get. But a lot of people use it because yeah, it dries, it evaporates uh, really quickly. And it's usually done like on the preliminary layers um, where it's like the first layer, you know, and mm -hmm. you're establishing, um, you know, a, uh, uh, you know, an underpainting like I did in, with gouache, but um, you could do it with oils, you know, that's kind of where, it, that's where it comes from. And, uh, and so what some artists do to, uh, you know, they like the feeling of tur turpentine, they'll mix it, they'll cut it with, uh, um, with like a medium, like a stand oil, uh, or, you know, linseed oil, or, you know, uh, you know, some, some medium like that, so that it, you still maintain the body of the paint, uh, but you get it thinner. Uh, so it's, uh, you increase the transparency of it. This, um, this reminds me of, I don't know if you remember this, Ray, but when we were in art school, I was trying to um, oil out, but I had like made a new. Yeah, I, I remember like, that. I was like, <laughs> I was messing around with a new, uh, I was like, oh man, okay, I'm going to make a new medium. I think we'd watched a bunch of videos. I'm like, okay, okay I'm going to make a new medium. And I, <laughs> I, had, I poured like, I went like equal parts linseed oil <laughs> and turpenoid, turpenoid being the solvent. And I was like, okay, this is going to be like Richard Schmidt's <laughs> medium, nothing like his medium, um, but I thought it was. And so I'm like oiling out this painting. It was a Lestad. This. It was a Lestad. Interview with yeah, the vampire. Yeah, that, I remember the, the vampire painting. Piece. And I was yeah, there when like, you were doing it. I, I was there like when you were doing it. melting it. it. <laughs> the I painting just remember. is melting before my eyes. And I'm like, what's happening? And Ray's like, what, did you, what are you oiling out with? He was like, like, one wipe. And it was fine. <laughs> Two wipe. It was, yeah, something was going on. And three, and then all of a sudden you just saw the painting. Like you saw the bits of like canvas all of a sudden yeah. popping through because the painting was melting. He didn't. You know, because he had just painted it, it was more touch dry. You know, oh my god, that was hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you're gonna make a medium, cool. You know, you can put a solvent in your medium, but if you're gonna oil out, don't oil out with a solvent. Um, yeah. That's just not gonna work. Question. This is a long one. Yeah. From many, right. many creature. I work in egg tempera, and while most of my work in the medium has been in a niche subject. I've been wanting to branch out into fantasy painting, which I do some digitally. First, can you share a bit about marketing fine art? I was finally able to quit my day job and start freelancing, but I'm not sure Congrats. how to keep a consistent client base. Secondly, how long do you spend on a piece for a big client? I ask because my work in egg tempera takes literally forever. Mm -hmm. Ah, um, wow, Ray, you might want to speak to this, but I am, I, just before Ray speaks to this, I am bravo on using egg, egg tempera. That's kind of incredible. Um, yeah. I have no idea. I've never used it. I hear it's very difficult. But um, just like Ray said earlier, um, there are techniques that are medium agnostic. So you can, you might be able to switch to a different medium and still do similar techniques if, if you feel egg tempera is too slow for what you're trying to do. 
Uh, but Ray, maybe you can speak to the other questions. Yeah, in terms of like uh, marketing your work and things like that. After. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just as uh, it's just as simple as once you're done with a piece, uh, you s send that piece out as long, you know as long as like the NDA is clear if you are under a, a non-disclosure agreement. But um, once you have that, um, send it out to potential you know other clients who might also use the same type of work, um, and just you know, keep updating them, get to know them, get to know the art directors, do your research. Um, so, you know, uh, share your work online and also, you know, try to cultivate a, a following, uh, engage your audience and, uh, you know, do, do, you know, streams online and answer questions and things like that about egg temper. Cause it's a really interesting medium. Um, it's uh, not a, it's, it's a not not a well known medium. It was the medium forever, you know. Uh, and, right, right. I mean, um, before they invented oil painting, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. And then, like, uh, the cool thing about that was when it came about, uh, when oil painting came into to fashion, they realized like they could do a lot of the stuff on egg tempera on a, on a board, like a hard because you got to do it on a rigid surface for the most part uh, if you're going to really build it up. Uh, and uh, you could do glazes in, you know. Uh, in oil paint on top of that. So it was like this, this kind of like- Cheating is what it was, is what you said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it drives so fast. Yeah. If, if it's not all cheating- mediums it, are cheating. Yeah, if it's not cheating, is it really art? <laughs> right, um, yeah. Here's a question from Chappy McChapman again. Has Tyler done any traditional pieces for D&D &D yet? Curious if it's just Magic the Gathering so far, maybe Kate can answer that. And I said in the chat that you haven't done any traditional pieces for D&D &D yet, but I thought that your answer for why might be interesting. Well, I, um, I mean, I, my first few pieces for D&D &D were in oils. Yeah. Um, I and I still have, I think, almost all of them except for one that I sold to a collector. And those were like fourth edition but, um, pieces that you did? Yeah, they were all fourth edition. So none of my fifth edition stuff was in oils. Um, but wait, what was the other part of that question? Oh, it was uh, my, I, I wanted to give you this question because I know that one of the reasons that you switched to digital was because of working for clients and, and the kinds of changes that are involved. And I just wanted to know if you wanted to talk about that a little bit. Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, that, that is why I had switched. Um, I had, you know, it was, there was a whole bunch of things going on. It was sort of like a confluence of, of, different reasons but there was there was like a, a lot of changes that I was having to deal with um, and you know changes are a little quicker when it comes to digital and there was also this amount of I had so, I was juggling so much stuff and you know I was new to the industry and my time management was pretty poor not to say that it's great now um, you're trying to make so a I was, professional polka band uh, yeah, I mean, I was really, I was trying to be a dancer at the same time, <laughs> and that's really hard to do. Um, so, you know, I had to give up my dancing dreams. No, um, so I was, I found I was in this scenario where I was having, I was painting almost all the painting in oil, and then I was rushing it over to this photographer that Ray and I used to use in San Francisco. Um, Don Almack. So I, yeah, Don Almack. He's in this little tiny hole in the wall, like right near the um, Stockton Tunnel. I hope he's still there. Um, and so I would drive over to San Francisco from the East Bay. I would park. There's this huge parking structure next to the tunnel. I'd park there. And then I would bring over these giant paintings. Like I'd have to cross the street in the wind and they're blown all over the place just to have oh this guy God. photograph him for two seconds because he was really fast. <laughs> and then I would go back over so i'd have this photograph of this unfinished painting then i'd go back home to my studio in the east bay and then and then i would um i would finish it digitally so i was do, i did that for like three paintings three or four paintings in a row and i was like what the hell am i doing I, i'm just gonna cut out the middleman here and paint the whole thing digitally um and so i started that's when i did my first digital piece and I was so happy with how it turned out and I didn't have to, at the time I was frustrated with like washing my brushes out and worrying about them. I just didn't know the craft very well. So I was frustrated by all this stuff and I was just like, forget it. I'm going to do, it. I'm going to do it digital. I'm really happy with this. I'm having fun. I don't have to worry about the mess. 
Um, and now this many years later, I've kind of come back around. I'm like, I really miss the craft of it. So um, I'm, I'm back into it that way because I love the, the craft of painting a painting. And that's my story. And you can see it in hard copy next season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when uh, book book when Tyler? Um, you know, when I get around to writing it. <laughs> you do have a writer in your house. Hey, question from Sarah Grace two one three. Have you guys decided what you're painting next, and why is it more images from Tombstone? So this is, I thought, an excellent question, and I mentioned to her that any Tombstone images you guys decide to do, you have a built-in buyer, which is very convenient. Although it's kind of, right. I feel like me just giving money to Ray is like <laughs> baby birding out. Anyway, uh, but we are going to, you guys are going to, I think at least one of you is going to wrap up your painting today. So have you decided what you're going to do for tomorrow's stream, a special so that, Box Expo stream? Um, yeah, I'm glad we're talking about this because I think, you know, this kind of goes right back to what we were just chatting about. And it's that I've done digital so much that I think tomorrow... Ray, you're probably going to be continuing on this piece because you're slow yeah. and all that. Yeah. Because you're slow and all that. <laughs> um, uh, tomorrow, I think I'm going to jump into a digital painting. And we'll have to you know, do some tech figuring out there. But um, I think I'd like to show the folks out who have come in just how I approach digital stuff. So I'll probably do just like a couple hours um, sketching around and maybe make a monster or something. That's what I usually do for my fantasy work. So. So yeah, um, I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I think it's going to be digital. I don't know what the subject matter will be. I'm probably, I think I'm leaning towards being some kind of weird creature because that's the kind of stuff I love doing, like visual development pushes. So yeah, again, that's the other part of my story. Hope you liked it. The only thing I got out of that is you were just being rude to me. So F in the chat if you agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, if I could hit F in the chat, I would. Oh, Denman Rook, F in the chat. Um, hey, Denman. Denman. <laughs> uh, Nito underscore Ree says, there will be a stream tomorrow? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is Lightbox weekend, everybody. So we're going to do, do two streams. Um, but I don't think we'll be doing anything Sunday, but, you know, we're doing... Today and tomorrow, we're going to have a good old time. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Because uh, I already told Kate, um, who is uh, the collector of this piece, that I'm painting the H-E double hockey sticks uh, out of this thing. So I am, I'm going to need, I'm going to need a second stream, a Saturday stream. That's yeah. right. This is one of those gonna... special three session paintings, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to need a lot more time, everyone. Just bear with him. Rome wasn't building a day, okay? It wasn't. Glad you brought that up. Let's get into Roman history now. No, you know what? I, I think out of respect for the masterpiece that is Tombstone, that I could spend another day because it's worth it. Don't you think so, Tyler? Or I do, you actually. finish up your piece? Because I'm such a big Tombstone fan, I do agree with you. But I also don't have the patience to work on a painting for too long and so i will abandon right. it yeah tyler will, will abandon ship so so last episode there was some serious appreciation in the chat for tyler's cup that he that oh, was yeah. painted oh, and yeah. when i mentioned this earlier tyler was like oh my god it's so easy to paint metal which is the most ridiculous oh, thing i've folks. ever heard so can you just give a little brief uh tutorial on how to it so is. easily paint metal tyler it's so easy, actually. No, like it's I mean, image, filter, uh, uh, reflection. Right? Yeah, no, cellophane. Yeah. This is cellophane. cellophane. Filter, yeah, but... you get that Photoshop gradient just right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, well, what we mentioned earlier was um, I'd said, oh, yeah, it's very easy to paint metal. And it's because you have to, th you can't think about it as metal. You have to think about metal as just reflections. So, like, I'm gesturing to this thing here, but like, all I'm painting is, is what this object is reflecting in the room. So it's reflecting a light source. Um, and then you are transitioning to these like grays that are reflecting other parts of the room. And then this, this like warmer side over here is reflecting his hand. So you're just like collecting those colors and you're putting them in. Um, 
I don't know. That's why I feel like it's so easy. Like, see, as this as this cup turns, as the form turns, it's starting to reflect his neck area, the warmth in his neck, um, or or like the rest of the room, which is kind of like a really warm lit room. Um, so you're getting all you bring all those warms back in, but then the main the main like specular section of you know the whole thing specular, but the really crazy highlight is reflecting essentially the lights that they have set up on this. You know, because this isn't a, obviously a documentary. This is a. Um, well, how do you know that? Film. Okay. This is a film, folks. Uh, yeah. Were you there? Were <laughs> yeah, you so, there? So you can see that the cup itself is reflecting. See this main hot spot here is reflecting the main light that's lighting this guy's face, Val Kilmer's face, and then you can see this other this other little line here is actually it's probably a bounce that they have off to um, his right over here. There's probably a bounce box or um, something, so you kind of get a, you can get an idea of what this room actually might look like or how the lights were set up, facing him. Uh, but that's metal. Like metal is just reflecting everything. Very easy, folks. Come on. Uh, wow, <laughs> so, Tyler. It's not that easy. It takes actually. Wow, it takes a lot of time of messing around with it to get it just right. But it is. It's. It's all just high contrast values and ref and remembering to reflect all the colors in the room. So here's another question from the chat from Nito underscore Re. Would you have any tips for networking as an artist and getting your work out there? I find that nowadays posting to just Instagram and such is like shouting into a void. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. Um, this is a crazy, you know, when Ray and I got out of school, it was all the advice was for us to go to conventions and like meet people directly. Um, that we went to conventions and realized nobody wanted to meet with you directly. Yeah, and everyone wanted to <laughs> use the new tools available to them, which were digital tools. You know, so yeah. it's. Um, I think my advice in this scenario would be, don't just shout into the void on like social media. Um, you know, try to track down, try and be more personal with it. Still try and send out mailers if you can, but try and get art directors' emails. You know, a lot of the times they work for a company and their emails are quite simple. You know, it's like something dot something at um, whatever the company's name is. Um, it's usually like the first name dot the last name. Um, but try and, you know, be a little more direct and check in with them. I think that's always a really good method. If you're going to send them stuff and you hear nothing, you know, maybe a couple months down the line, as you've done new work, make sure you're always doing new work send them more new work. Say, hey, just want to update you. You know, it's a good way to show our um, art directors that you are constantly improving or trying to improve or constantly Absolutely. You're not sitting around idly. So yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I agree it's difficult in this age. But you know what, I, I, I think that, and I'm just gonna add on, on to that. Please, uh, please I, think, I, think, I think it's always been difficult. Um, you know, one thing that, uh, 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 Greg Manchus, who is uh, actually doing Lightbox too, so um, yeah, yeah, he's an incredible now. artist. Um, is he doing? Is he live now? No, no. Um, I think he's oh. doing something later on today, but I don't remember the schedule. Um, okay. Maybe he is live right now. I don't want to. So, but I also don't want anyone to leave. So stay around. Yeah, don't leave. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's not that good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he's no Thomas Blackshear. Yeah. No Thomas Blackshear. I mean, he only did the Captain Morgan uh, logo, and you know, <laughs> one of the greatest illustrators, you know, in our present era. So we, we know uh, Greg. So we can rip into him. Whatever, right. whatever, Greg. You know. Uh, so he had told me he was like, it's always been hard to be an illustrator, and uh, he said that it's there's always there's always been like more for you know forever there's always been more artists than there are jobs and so the and it's always been hard to kind of set, you know differentiate yourself from the masses and you know back in the day people would send mailers but so would everyone else you know and yeah, exactly and then take out ads at like these super expensive uh, um, directories but so would everyone else I mean the ads were basically like you know this thick and multiple volumes and Mm -hmm. you know how do you how do you stand out you know and um i think you just gotta kind of do all of it and uh but you know do the social media thing do you know make sure you have a website promote yourself uh 
you know, in, in those veins, but use that also as a platform where you're to, to bring people to not, not like, not just as much as just sending it out and hoping for the best. I think that's a, that's a big thing that um, one of the uh, a good friend of mine's Bob Pastore, uh, who's a marketer, uh, he had told me, he was like, he's at work, you gotta, book, right? he's at work, he's book, at work yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he gave me great advice in that, like the website, the, uh, you know, uh, the website, the, the, the social media, that's all like places where you have your work. But now what you do is you bring people to that and, you know, you'll, you'll start like a flood of things because once somebody does that, you know, uh, then you could bring that, you know, uh, you know, then you'll have more and more people sort of th coming at you. But, uh, I, I think that's a, a big thing. And I, I think social media is great because you can, uh, you can access people from all over the world. Right. And, and the great thing about it is that it's a great quick way of sharing your work. So when you meet somebody in a convention, uh, or you meet a gallery owner or art director, uh, you give them your business card and it has your uh, Instagram on it, you know, or whatever, yeah. your, you know, art station uh, or whatever, you know, and it just gives them instant access to the work, you know, and, and I think that that's, uh, you know, a, a great thing, but you've got to bring people to it, not the, not the other way around. I, th I think that's like a big, um, I mean, you see people like, you know, a lot, all these influencers, like, just like, putting up selfie videos and like, you know, just it, 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 the world's coming to them. And it, it's sort of like a false, uh, you know, uh, equivalency, you know what I mean? It's not like, it's not really the way it works. It's like, you you have to have people come. If you build it, they will come, but you have to bring a couple of people along with you, you know? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot more of a hustle when it comes to um, illustration and fine art that you, you have to be proactive about it. And, I'm glad you brought that up, Ray, about like influences and stuff. Like there's this sort of, I guess, view of this, um, of people now that you kind of just post things on social media and then people just find you. It, it's just, I mean, it may work in particular like you know, influences and stuff, but for illustration work or visual development or fine art, like you have to put your, you have to physically or digitally put your stuff in front of the people you want to see it right. um you can't expect them to just find it on their own and it, it looks better for you when you've actually gone to and done it right like you brought your stuff to an art director you know that that alone is going to impress them that oh, okay this person really wants this stuff they've come to me they didn't just they didn't just leave it out there for me to accidentally find right and, and like you know uh, just break it down logically i mean if you were an art director, would you hire somebody that you knew that you've met before who you like to work or somebody you like, like to work but have never met before and only know from their website, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah, really all that. that way. Yeah. There are, they're, they're, they're human beings on the other side is basically what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm getting. Well, at. yeah. And I've had lots of uh, like art directors I've worked with over the years that have come back because you know, I've been professional. We had a good time working together. Um, that, that's those are the kinds of um, relationships you want to create. And just like sitting back and waiting for someone to find your work is is not going to create that relationship. You have to go out there and do it. Yeah. Okay. Next that, question. I think that's the hard part for me. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Bing. More questions. Oh, no questions. Dang it. Okay. I was thinking, well, we're, I good. Want, we're good. I didn't want Kate to feel like she had to like interrupt us. Well, what are we going to talk about now then? We don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? What did you do today, Ray? What did you have for dinner? You know, what, what's going on? <laughs> I am, uh, I was painting today, like I'm doing here, which is, uh, I'm getting into the opaque section of this oil painting right here, trying to. I don't want to cover up all this really nice texture that I have. Um, and I got to be careful with that. Uh, but I also do want to add more form to it. So I've been really blocking things in pretty opaquely with uh, acrylics. Oh, man. Uh, that, I just saw it now. It's so good. That transition to the pinks and sky. Whew. Thanks, man. And Jesus. I'm trying to design like a, uh, like a CM doodash uh, kind of fade into the this 
you know, this silhouette right here. So I'm tinkering around it, placing in like my colors. Uh, so uh, hopefully I can get it in. Um, and then well, if I like not, if I, if, okay, good. No, I said, if not, I can um, handle it in oils. Um, if I really need to kind of let, the, you know, work with something that doesn't dry as quickly. Right, right. Yeah. I love what you got there with the, um, it's sort of the second guy from the, the of the figures walking in the background, the, the second guy from the right, he's he's got that orange, almost like glare from the sun yeah. coming through. Like, that's, yeah, yeah. oh man, that's such a hard thing to get when you get like a, when you have like a, a, when the camera's facing a light source, getting that glared edge. Right. Real challenging. Yeah. I'm totally making that up, but yeah. Well, yeah, but that's the thing, right? Like from going back to like the training we received, like you, you start thinking about all that stuff, like, cause you've learned how to paint everything so you can make that stuff up. Right. 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 Also, I mean, I saw it in a photo. Uh, I saw it in tombstone. I was watching the scene, but it, they had it with like horses. Uh, and uh, I should pull that reference up so I can really get into it. But um uh, I was like, oh, that's so cool. I got to do that. But, you know, you know, the horses, they weren't really on horses the whole time. And really the iconic scene is when they're walking, you know, into uh, the OK Corral. Yeah, get down so. to the OK Corral. Yeah. Man, I love that movie so much. I need to watch it again. We can watch it tonight. It's just, it's just so good. <laughs> hey, Ray. Everyone, go watch Tombstone. One thing to know is that as your buyer for this piece, you can throw a horsey in there anywhere you want. Just plop one in. <laughs> just plop one in. Uh -oh. Who cares? Anywhere you are you directing? Yeah. You are directing? Yeah, just plop a horse in. Uh, so oh, I'm sorry. I was I, I took a, a bathroom break, and we have we have lots of questions. Don't worry. Um, okay. Perrier Perry underscore Gray on the subject of the cup, Tyler. As you add colors to the portrait subject, do you then add them to the cup? Ooh. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if if I were to make like a major shift in this in the face colors here, then you would want to try and reflect it into the cup. But like, I'd, I'd say the only part of this cup that's really that's truly reflecting this guy is is um, this side of the cup that's reflecting his hand. And so right now, I don't really have it lined up color wise, but I'm going to adjust that. Um, but um, if if I were to make big sweeping color changes to his fingers here, then yeah, sure, I would want to. Um, I would want to mess with um, the colors in the cup. But you know, this is like it's a trick of the of the shape, right? So I, no one's really going to probably notice if it's if it's super different from the colors in his hands, as long as the values are, are just right. And this has come up a lot. Um, like the colors can kind of be whatever you choose them to be, as long as your values are really strong and correct. Amen to that. Hey, Amen to that. F in the chat for that. Hey, F in the chat. another question from Corbin Hubler. This may be a harder question to respond to, but how do you know if your portfolio is good enough to present to companies? Um, in, in a vacuum, you probably aren't going to know, but once you start putting it out there and getting feedback, then you're going to have a better way to dial in as to what you, what, how your portfolio stands in that industry. Um, I'm really a, a big advocate of, of not working in a vacuum. So get as many eyes on your portfolio as possible. Agreed. Yeah. Um, the answer will always be no if you don't show anyone your work. So um, yeah, it's the same with awards. Exactly. You know, you're never going to get an award if you never submit your work to the award show. Right, right. So you're not gonna know how your stuff is if you don't show it to people. Uh, that is a terrific answer, also a terrifying one. Um, on this- Oh well, yeah, it's scary out there. On the similar oh my subject, God, it's so, <laughs> it's so scary. Uh, is it just, when it comes to, from Kipling underscore art, um, when it comes to contacting art directors, do you just contact them directly? I do understand that posting just to show work gets me close to nowhere, but are there better outlets? Are there other outlets that better display your work? Uh, or is it just about like hunting down an email address and being very direct? Um, there's a lot of different ways, but um, there is an aspect of it that is trying to get their email address so that you can contact them directly. Um, you know, post or pre-pandemic, um, you could go to events and find art directors and the you know the great thing about that is, if you can um, 
show them your work. Maybe they, even if they're like, ah, oh, this isn't really working for me, but they know other people in the industry. So they might go talk to them or send you to them or um, so that, that networking thing. But, you know, today in this pandemic, it's a bit harder. So there's an aspect of trying to get your work in front of them and that's finding their email address if you can or try, trying to get their eyes on your work in social media, which um, is a challenge. So yeah, I, I don't necessarily have like a perfect answer for this because it's, it's so difficult, but um, any way to personally contact them is always going to be better. Yeah, it's not a, it's not easy, but you, you've got to, uh, you know, but anything worthwhile isn't easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I still, I'm always trying to push my work uh, and because there's always, there's so many people in the world and you've, you just have to go with the attitude that no one has seen, even though, a, you know, a bunch of people have seen a piece, there's always going to be even more people that haven't seen a piece before. Uh, and, you know, just keep, just keep pushing it and, and getting and pushing yourself and getting better with every piece. Like uh, I think Tyler and I, uh, one of the biggest things that we did uh, in school and especially outside of school was just be dead honest uh, about where our works stood, you know, in, you know, on when compared to the industry, you know, what were the best examples and would our work be, you know, uh, uh, good enough to stand right next to it. Uh, and, you know, you know, you never always like the answer because you're never as good as you, you want to be right. Um, no, you should be, but, uh, it's, it sets you on a path of improvement and always learning. Uh, and, you know, with that, you'll, you'll do a, a, a better piece every single time, or at least you, you should try to outdo yourself uh, and never be satisfied. And then once, once you have that, you know, all while submitting and, you know, again, just going back to what Tyler and I were saying before, like, you know, uh, uh, getting invested, investing yourself in communities, you know, uh, and, just putting your work out there, you know, not, not in a, like a pushy type of way, but just, you know, I mean, let's, let's for example, De Demon, you know, uh, Demon Rook, incredible artist, right? And I mean, we all met at a, at a show, you know, at El LuxCon and, you know, Tyler's career was just starting. All of our careers were just starting, you know, and we were just out there showing our work and just getting feedback and learning how to just improve it, you know? And uh, ElixCon was um, a huge thing for me. You know, I, I'd gotten really great feedback. It was uh, feedback that made me realize I knew way little, way, way less than I thought I did, or I was a little bit further, a lot further away than what I thought I was. And that was a real eye opener for me. Uh, and um, it was a great um, uh, portfolio review from, uh, uh, an artist by the name of Rob Rupel, the legend. And, um, you know, he, he set me on a path that like, you know, caused my work to get to a next level. And, you know, I'll always be grateful for that. So, but, you know, it's, it's all about having that attitude towards your, your work too, you know, um, always I think, wanted. I think that, not to interrupt you, but I, I think no, that goes do. back to kind of that, that other question about like, how do you know if your portfolio is good? Like, all of these culminate in, in understanding where your work stands, you know, seeing, right. taking it places or, or comparing it to people that work professionally in the industry helps you understand where your work stands. You know, if you put your work side by side with someone who's getting professional work, it, there should be, if you haven't gotten any work yet, you should be able to see what's missing. Right. Um, and that, but that takes a little bit of learning, you know, getting the eye for it. So many questions. Here's our next one. Mm. Nito underscore Re asks, when doing a commission for a client fantasy illustration, once the thumbnail slash colors are approved, is there really no going back? Or can you generally change or add something, some new color to the painting? Or is that like an industry no-no? If you're going to make a change after you've had sketch approval, you should ask the art director about it. Um, like, you know, say, hey, I got this new idea. Um, I made this change and show them before you proceed because they've already, you don't want to surprise them. You never want to surprise an art director on the, on no. the back end. 
my yeah, god it's it's gonna be bad for you <laughs> so um so yeah run it by them um if they like it cool if not you know it's gonna be one of those oh dang well i'm working for i'm working for these people so i got to do what they want but um yeah i i don't think it's a no-no it's just you just got to make sure the no-no would be to surprise them so don't don't surprise them yeah the, the key word is communication you know uh yeah don't be just be direct and uh and clear about and concise and and also think of the flip side of that you know if they if you know don't don't get pushed around um if they make like a major sweeping change right that um if they ask you to change something significant after you've had approval you know be like okay we need to have a that that's different than what we talked about so you know i i tend to approach those as like we're kind of we're getting into change fee territory i'm always willing to say like yeah i'll make these changes but um if it's significantly different or there's a whole bunch of them um we i begin to have a conversation about like okay well I think we need to talk about change fees at this point. Um, don't rush into that though. I, I tend to, I tend to treat that in a, you know, okay, I'll do the, you get like a couple strikes kind of from, from an art director. Like if, if there's a big change or maybe something changed on their end that, you know, they're a big company, um, we can talk about that. But if it's like, okay, now more changes that were, that were stuff that's after sketch approval. Then I'm then I lean into this sort of okay well now we're getting into change fee territory and right, we have right. a, a more business conversation about that and most people are willing to do that as long as you're polite about it and get, give them your perspective like hey a lot of, you've changed a lot of you've moved the goalpost on me a whole bunch um, so this isn't you know this is now changed into something else very different from what was approved and we should chat about compensation. Always a so scary like, conversation to have, but just don't yeah. try. It's it's good to not be pushed around. As yeah, long as you're professional and polite about it, you're not going to lose a job because you ask them to um, change, you know, to give you a change fee. So you know, like if Kate wants a horse, we're going to have yeah, to talk yeah. about change fees. <laughs> yeah, that's not what the approved sketch was. Well, Kate wants a yeah. horse. Kate wants a little <laughs> horse right in the middle of Wyatt's mustache. Hey. Sarah Grace 213 has a question. Are you guys looking forward to anything during this Lightbox Expo weekend? Um, I think, um, I wanna say my friend, my good friend Jesper Icing is doing a, a, a demo tomorrow and I'm really excited to see that. So if, if anyone knows Jesper Icing's work, he's a Danish artist, but he does a lot of work for fantasy companies that I do work for. Um, he works all in acrylic and I think he's going to paint like a gnome or a goblin or something tomorrow. Sweet. And I'm really looking forward to that. I always like watching Jesper paint. So I got to get on that schedule uh, and, and see. I've, I've seen a bunch of uh, like YouTube uh, like uh, streams, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, Stan Prokopinko had a really nice stream. It was like a, a figure drawing that he had done, a demo. That, that was a lot of fun to see. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's been just, Lightbox, it's like, it, it's, it's filled with so many good artists, you know, like, uh, I mean, like, uh, 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 Carla or Ortiz and, uh, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, I think like Carla's her. doing a bunch of stuff right now, um, for until like 9 PM. If um, she knows what's good for her, she won't be. Well, yeah, she's got to stop, but she's yeah, doing she's it until like 9 PM, um, West coast time. So she's going to be painting all day, essentially. Dang, Carla. Yeah, doesn't she have a job? What's going on? Yeah, some people are treating this very professionally, you see. <laughs> hey, we are too. We're streaming. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> question. Uh, question from everyone. This is a great question. Because of how the internet works, is there a level of caution to consider in demonstrating your work versus setting yourself up for piracy? Are there ways to protect your work that people should know about? I'm curious if either of you have ever been a victim of someone pretending to have painted your art. Yeah, I mean, I have, but I still don't. I, I remember when it happened. I still don't know what their end game is. I, it, like, I just don't know what they're going to do with pirating the work. Like, I guess they could sell it 
but most of my work is owned by Wizards of the Coast, so they're inviting a pretty significant lawsuit. Right. I, I, I just don't, and, and then when they get more work, what's going to happen? Like, they're going to be like, yeah, I can do that work, and then they're going to go steal other work that, I just don't, I don't know. I don't see it as a significant problem to be trying to avoid because I just don't see the, the end game for them. It seems like a one shot thing. Like they're going to get a job from it and they'll make some money, but it's, it's work you already did. So it, you probably yeah. already got paid for the work unless it's like samples that you made, but I just don't get it. I don't, I yeah. don't understand why people out there are doing it. It's very strange to me. Um, yeah, I don't really work on um, licensed stuff. So that, that seems to be like a real problem with like a lot of people who work on licensed, popular licensed properties, right? I mean, like, I know many like artists who work at Marvel that have had that happen, you know? Um, yeah, and, I just, I've, I've seen it and I just don't, it seems to be that it's people in other countries doing it for clients in other countries. Oh, so okay. there's less eyes on it here because I've just never seen someone like try and rip off a Wizards of the Coast painting for Fantasy Flight Games or Paizo, you know? Right, um, right, right, right. Or the other way around, like rip off one of those. I've just, I mean, I've seen fellow artists of mine, like I know Mike Lem has had tons of people like use his art, but I just don't know what they're doing with it or how it's a, how it's like a system of fraud I, I just don't know how it works uh so don't do it folks so do you have any advice on how to protect yourself from piracy can you even protect yourself so like putting a, a, a watermark all over your painting is there anything else you can do i i mean i know a lot of art directors don't even like to see that so i just don't i don't know how you could protect yourself from it because anyone could take the watermark off digitally right Okay. So, I don't have it. I yeah. do not have advice on that. We have not, you we become have not a bigger used. pirate. Yeah. Or just don't have, yeah. like, keep your art skill low enough that the pirates just aren't interested. There you go. Just don't well, there is a real good. That's why they don't bother <laughs> I mean, me. <laughs> okay. I think Damn I, thought it, I was winding I thought up to that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my advice would be, would be to not even worry about it. Just push forward, make new art. Because whoever's stealing your art, isn't going to be able to keep up because you're going to be constantly making new art and getting better. Yeah. And they're just yeah. going to be left in the left behind stealing art. So it's just leave them behind. It's not a long-term uh, solution for them. It's not a very good long-term solution for them. Yeah. It's not, it's not anybody's uh, long-term career. No. So the fat Baron has a question. Do you find that honest crit critique is easier or harder to come by as a pro both giving and receiving. I think I found it easier to find in school, but in UX design, I feel like it's a skill lots of people have lost as they've become professionals. Yeah, actually, I think I agree. I think it is harder to find. Um, I think I have people that I trust to get feedback from. Yeah. And maybe that's why it's harder to find because I'm, I'm, I have my own way of doing things but I do have like a few people that I want to get eyes on it. You know, like I, I'll run things past Ray or run things past some other um, illustrators I know, but it's a very short list. Wow, none taken. And um, I don't let Kate give me any feedback <laughs> because I don't think it, she is gonna, I'm gonna stop Effort there. Effort chat if you think <laughs> Tyler is in rare form. <laughs> Actually, Kate was giving me feedback on this piece this morning. She's like, it looked like crap and you need to fix it. And I said, I don't think I, said, I actually. Touche. That's why you're not on the, why, now why would, wouldn't Kate be on the list then? I don't know. <laughs> she was for a minute. But Clearly then, honest. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, um, Howard Lyon says that you guys should paint a centaur. Sorry, Ray, this is for you. What about a centaur in Ray's painting with the upper body of Clint Eastwood? So. Oh man, something to consider. And I, Sounds I told like, yep. me, Howard. Howard already knows me pretty well. Um, you can pay that, bro. Rick's <laughs> no, no, we we started. <laughs> Howard Lyons gonna fund the change fee. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rex Verity, not a question. I enjoy seeing how you both approach painting. I'm learning a lot as a result. 
Awesome, thank you. Max. Thank you. I mean, you. that thank was kind of like us. one of the points of doing this was to um, to get compliments. Uh, control Z with my finger. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was to get compliments, and but it was also to to show that Ray and I have very different. Even though we have very very similar training, we have very different approaches. Totally. Not very different, but different approaches. Yeah, I mean, so I, mine, mine are correct and Ray's are sort of wrong. <laughs> Hey, what do you, if you guys could ask each other a question, what would it be? Oh, Ray. What you uh, think I got a question Dune? for you. What did you think of that Dune trailer? No, me first. What's your <laughs> problem, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. that's a long story. That's a long Where to story. Begin? <laughs> and I don't want to get into it right now. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, but okay, so I don't have an answer for that currently, but um, what'd you think of that Dune trailer? What oh you, my God, man, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm a huge, Everybody. I'm a huge Dune fan. So uh, thanks to Eric Johnson, our really, our mutual good friend uh, and great artist. Uh, he got me, he bought me do the, uh, the first book and I stayed yeah. in my room for years and in San Francisco and um, he, it wasn't until like a summer where I had to stay home. I had to miss a bunch of trips because I was working on illustration projects and I like, you know, it, it was a short deadline that I just, I would take breaks and I cracked open Dune and it's like, I never look back. So I, I love, love, love Dune. Yeah. Um, Tyler loves the Dune book as well. Right, Tyler? You, you love it. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, I've totally been able to read more than 20% of it ever. Totally. Oh my God. Um, it's very accessible. Um, don't don't bother. It's not. You know what? Don't. Dune is not going to waste its time with fools. Okay. <laughs> the reason I am excited for Dune the movie is it's one of my all time favorite directors, Denis Villeneuve, and he is amazing oh my as God, a director. Yeah. So I think this might be not that David Lynch. Not there's anything wrong with David Lynch. Uh, is there um, something wrong with David Lynch? It's just, okay. There's nothing wrong this with David a, Lynch as a person. No, there's just a lot wrong with David Lynch's version of Dune. Oh, yeah. Um, we don't need to get it. Should we get into it? Well, you you know what? You called, uh, the last stream you called, first of all, you insulted the Scottish people like eight times well, in the first nice like folks, 12 though. minutes. And then, and then yeah. you called uh, Tombstone, which I love, okay? The best Western of all time. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? So, so you can make, you know, I mean, we were used to making big swings. I mean, you know, so, you know, I, I, I'm not a huh? fan of David Lynch's, uh, you know, oh, yeah, adaptation sure. of, of Dune. I think um, we're going to agree on this one here that it's not good. It's um, it's rough. All versions. They just they gave him too much money. And it, it also was the wrong, it was just, you couldn't pull it off with that, uh, at the time, I guess. I don't know. It just wasn't. Without, without Salvador Dali, you would not be able yeah. to pull it off. Right, right. Or, you know. Uh, uh, Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. Without Mick Jagger. Uh, yeah. Everybody should with, watch with... Yodorowsky's Dune. It's an incredible documentary. Absolutely. It's incredible. Um, so here's a question from uh, Nito underscore Reed. What is the best piece of advice you were given as a student? It might be hard to pick just one, but you can do more if you want. Ray. Warm shadow soft, cast shadow hard. Bill Maher. Yeah, jeez, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna have to agree with that actually. Um, although I think if I had a runner up, it was um, it was actually from Randy, not from Bill. Uh, Randy told me. Does um, Bill know about this? Uh, well, we'll tell him later when we have him on the show. <laughs> um, it was it was a little more. I mean, it was more complicated, I guess, than 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 that one but it is that um value is most important in your composition then temperature then color um so that was one of my um sort of been like the cornerstone of how i develop an image so i'd say that was some of my best best advice yeah. received uh i had we had so much good stuff. I mean, Craig Nelson was a huge influence on me. He's another just incredible, incredible artist. Um, Man, we should tell him about yeah. Craig. Remember that 
Okay, I'll I'll lead into it. You correct me as I screw up this story, but Craig okay. Nelson used to do comps for Drew Struson. And oh, um, he used to do co comps for movies that Drew Struson ended up doing the final one. Right. So he would do like the black and white comp. And it was he could draw exactly in Struson's style of drawing. And in fact, there's a bunch of artists at our school that could all draw that way. Um, they all just learned to do it. And from Richard Craig, Amsel. From Richard Amsel. <laughs> and um, Craig Nelson had done a black and white comp for the Police Academy movie. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the first one, right? Was it like the second one? No, but the, the one with the, the blimp, he went to full color on. All right. Uh, but, so yeah. he had done one of the comps and it was just sitting in his studio, his office at the Academy of Art on the ground. It had like a footprint on it. <laughs> he brought his it footprint. His footprint. He brought it out to show us. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just did that. Yeah, it was fun. It was a good job. And it was just like, it looked like this because they could all draw in this style. Right. It looked like an original Struson drawing with a with a man's boot print all over it. <laughs> <laughs> it was oh, mind boggling. Okay. Um, but he did, uh, Craig Nelson did um, another one of my favorite 80s movies, Monster Squad. He yeah. did the poster for Monster Squad. Which um, Tyler, we should you do. Are, you want to do that for Halloween? Like, uh, oh my god, do Monster Squad stuff? Yeah, yes. yeah, maybe you know, it's just, a, it's just an idea. It's an idea. Let's do it because I don't know okay. if you folks out there are familiar, but Monster Squad is a horrible movie, literally but, the um, greatest movie of all time, <laughs> but also the greatest. It's got, it's got Stan Winston Studio doing some of the best monster effects in the history of movie makeup. Um, I, I'm just going to keep raving about it. Let's do some portraits for Monster Spot. Please. Yeah, we could do it. We could do it. I like that. Oh, it's so bad, everyone. Please hate watch it because it's terrible. It's so good. How scary so so is bad. it? It's like on It's not scary list. at all. It's at terrifying. All. It's terrifying. laughable most of the time. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't watch it if it's too scary. No, it's not scary. We can watch it. You'll see. Okay. You'll be like, oh, oh this, yeah, is you should... supposed, this is supposed to be a monster movie? Yeah, the word monster is pretty scary. And a squad of them? Yikes. No, no, the kids are the squad. It's like, so this is what happened with this movie. Okay, I they, think it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. The, I don't know if anyone remembers The Goonies, but it was a big deal. The Goonies was a big deal. <laughs> People made and a lot of money. <laughs> Universal was like, oh, we got to make... We got to make that kind of money, guys. We got to make another Goonies, but with classic Universal monsters. Yeah, You're Universal on the rights to them monsters. anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was a massive failure. Um, just a huge flop. Nobody I wouldn't liked say it. creatively. I mean, maybe creatively is amazing. Financially, yeah. it was a huge flop, um, which is too bad because it's awesome and terrible at the same time. I know you guys are getting mixed reviews from me. When, when I say it's <laughs> terrible, I often mean that it's amazing. Yeah, one of Tyler's favorite movies of all time is Highlander, which is objectively oh, yeah. really just a terrible, awesome movie. No. Hey, here's yeah, a question awesome. from Aaron Rufino. Though these, Aaron. though these are hey, from Aaron. A, Aaron. I know, like you guys, you guys are always excited to see Aaron, which is why uh, Aaron has such a lovely gemstone next to her name though these are from a movie where the composition has been decided already how are you deciding to make your own focal point or adding your own interest to the piece good question i am actually popping color a little bit more than that this is a i grabbed a frame right out of um i'm being a little more impression here i'll bring the reference over so you guys can see i grabbed a frame right out of the movie um it's nearly monochromatic there's like a smidge of color in it so I'm I'm actually adding way more color than there's actually there. Being a little more impressionistic about it. And I'm um, so this is a composite of uh, one, two. What what did we say before, Ty? One, two, three, four, five, six photographs. Yeah. Or six individual elements. So I decided on the composition per se, but I had wanted a like uh, like staring into the sun type of uh, feeling and with like the desert and everything like that. So I took a, a bunch of references and then composed them uh, myself. And so I used the um, uh, 
the thing like the just elements like the uh, uh, okay corral, the um, this uh, uh, the tombstones, the clouds, uh, uh, the brim of the hat, all as like compositional tools to like have this kind of cyclical type of uh, composition. So like your mm -hmm. eyes always going around. So this is something Tyler and I, uh, we really started to learn when you started to teach with like, I started to study with John Rush and you were studying with Randy and we were all like both exchanging ideas about like, you know, how like people like Howard Pyle would draw the eye towards, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, a focal point of some sort. And so, uh, so like the, the, the cuff, like I lined it up so that the cuff is like going towards the, uh, uh, the, uh, the figures, I lessen the contrast down here and I'm going to continue to do that so that this, your eye doesn't, can go down here, but it really doesn't want to, uh, it's not going to stay down here, it's not attracted to that. And then the, the hat, um, you know, goes over here and then you can see the clouds, the clouds that I picked, they're all running really towards his, his, his face, like in this area right around here, which is where I'm going to put like all the subtle uh, tones and values and uh, uh, color shifts and things like that. And so, um, I wanted this to be the focal point right here. Uh, and, you know, the, the supporting elements when you're putting something like this together all have to support, have to support the, the main focal point. They could be their own thing, but they, you have to kind of uh, knock them down in terms of contrast, uh, in terms of interest, uh, and uh, so on and so forth, so that you're you're telling the main story, which is the character of, in this case, the character of Kurt Russell, and you know, uh, Tombstone, like the you know the ensemble of uh, uh, cast members and things like that, or characters. Yeah, I mean, it becomes like the, like you were saying, like this is kind of stuff we learned near the end of our career in school is. Right. It's like we've learned all the technical skills. You know how to paint a thing or whatever um, but now it's like culminating in okay so you've learned all these little skills how do you build a piece with intention you know you're, you're being thoughtful about where you're placing everything you're designing right. it um and that stuff is that's that's where you become you know that's where your true artist voice starts coming out because you're totally. you're leading the viewer through this image you're totally. commanding the the um narrative essentially yeah I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, it's a pre like learning all the technical stuff, uh, f fundamentals, foundational stuff is a prerequisite into un a being a really uh, effective visual communicator. You know, uh, you need it, uh, but it's not. It's a means to an end, not an end in itself, right? Uh, and because you have to understand how to go about applying that knowledge, and and that's where like you know things like. Uh, keeping track of all of these elements comes into play in, in shape design and, you know, um, all the, all the things that like, you know, you, uh, uh, you, you come to enjoy in other people's artwork. I mean, look at any, any artist that like, that we've yelled out, you know, name, like, you know, look at one of Howard's pieces, like every element in that piece is purposely place there you know it's not um it's not like this random guesswork or it's just not like uh it's not randomized you know same thing with like denman you know uh, uh you look at his uh, uh key art that he did for um empire of sin which is a new video game that's going to be coming out from R romero games like everything is is placed there purposely to tell a story um yeah you're running the show you're the artist right so you, right, you right. you're commanding what people see um, and that's actually one of my favorite things about having become an artist is that I love that that aspect of it. Like, right. I I control the tricks of this illusion. You know, this is a flat image. I'm tricking the viewer into thinking that you know these things are real. I am the trick master. <laughs> I am the illusion master now. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, so what my point is, I, I love tricking people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> F, in the, F in the chat, if you're not surprised that uh, Tyler <laughs> enjoys being a liar. <laughs> I, love, I love lying. I love it. Uh, I'm actually just, zeroing in on being done with this yeah, painting, be, Ray. How are you doing over Ray there, likes, Ray likes me to tell you what time it is. It's 4.41. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're getting near the end of today's stream. 
Oh, so, um, man. Let me ask this. What do, would people like to see me do something digital tomorrow? If you, if you feel like tuning back in with our shenanigans? Because yeah, I, I think I would like to do that. We've only done traditional work so far on LiveBrush. Um, and yeah, we could, we could definitely hook it up so Tyler can show you his, his digital skills too. All right, so we've got a yes, two yeses in the chat. Tengu Bruxo, oh, this... Tengu Bruxo says, I'll be here. I would love to see digital. Okay, yeah, it sounds it sounds like people are really excited then. to see it's digital. Yeah. You could have just said F in the chat if you want me to do digital. Yeah, but, except yeah. that the chat is mostly just <laughs> Fs at this point. It's unclear what they're for. <laughs> uh, um, yes, we've broken well, the you, stream. We did it. They probably won't get to see my handsome face, but. Um, no, we'll see your handsome face, don't worry. All right, well, it'll be You're mostly leaned over. It'll be leaned over a computer monitor like this and underlit, which is nice and spooky. You know? So a really solid show planned, uh, you know, for tomorrow. No Tyler and mostly uh, Kate and I. <laughs> I don't know. I think I like where, where this landed. I don't know. Dude, it looks no, great. Do. I'm just looking at I it do. now. It looks awesome. This double really came together there at the end and it's amazing. Good, good. Okay, I see it now through the viewfinder over here, and I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, this is the thing we've talked about on the show a lot. I get, I get blind to a painting pretty quick. Right. So I, I'll often like turn my painting upside down in my studio to get like fresh eyes on it from a different angle, and then Kate will see me do that. She'll come in and be like, um, that's upside down. You know, hey, she'll. Did you know you're painting that upside down? Um, <laughs> one thing I, right because it's at a, it's kind of at an angle from the camera, Tyler. Do you want to? point it toward the camera so they could see it flat and then of course we're oh, gonna sure. need you to sign it i'm sure there'll be glare yeah the glare is going to show up but it's a little well, bit more you didn't put your uh a polarizing uh filter yeah, on there's, there's the no glare. lens i have to like tape it to my ipad um you know it's howard, on my, was, howard was so it's nice on my lens time. my time lapse oh yeah he was i know i know howard i'm sorry he was so nice to get me these new tools and I'm, I, I could just tape it over the thing like this. I could just, you know what? I want to show people something fun though. Let's talk about this filter. Yeah, do that while I... Uh... Um, there's not a ton of glare on my piece right now, but these are the filters. This is just a filter that you would put over a um, camera lens, but it's it's polarized. So it has little, um, so you can see with the, the limited amount of glare that I have on here, you can see it there, and then as I turn this, it just vanishes. And all the darks get nice and dark. So we'll turn it back. You can see the glare up here in the matted areas, mostly up in the top of his hat. And then turn it, and it just all vanishes. It's magical. Um, and Howard's changed my whole, he's gotten, you know, photographing a painting was always like the hardest thing for me. Oh my God, it's the worst. It was the worst. And now I can get it done in 10 minutes. Oh yeah, it's the easiest now. I just throw it up on my board here. I have it under the same lights and I snap a, a bunch of photos of it. Um, Photoshop will like auto stitch them. And since I have the polarizers on, so I don't have any glare to deal with and I don't have to oil it out um, to bring all the darks back out because the polarizer takes care of that as well. It's just, it's pure magic. Um, thank you, Howard. You changed my whole life. Um. <laughs> That's the best piece of advice we've ever had. Was from Howard. One thing, yeah, best. Of, <laughs> that's the best advice. <laughs> I was gonna say, Ray, your, your Kurt Russell. Um, I don't know. It doesn't really look like this Kurt Russell. It looks, oh! it looks exactly like that Kurt Russell. That's the greatest <laughs> Western of all time, right? That's it true. is. It is. This was everybody. If you haven't seen Big Trouble in Little China, it's amazing. And it was originally supposed to be a Western, but they set it in the 80s instead. And it might have been the most genius move of all time. I wanted to point out too that you have continued your your uh, sweaty your sweaty sexies uh, with Dude, Val Kilmer yeah. here. I don't know. Oh, I don't know you what it have. Is. I don't know. What oh it is, my God. You and sweaty people. 80s and early 90s, man, that was the best special effect they could get on set was a spray bottle. <laughs> That's all and they had. They man. just sprayed everyone's faces. And then it was like, That's oh, it really looks like they're working hard or they're stressed or they're sick. That's all they had. Perfect. 
Um, I want to make sure. Like, oh, I got to sign this. Oh, yeah. yeah you definitely sign need this. to sign this. <laughs> Tomorrow's stream, by the way, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Is same that, bat time, same that, bat channel. Is that the plan? Yeah, okay. yeah. Great, great. Um, you know, we got to um, got to keep it consistent. Let all the folks know. Find a good brush to sign here with. And as you're signing, I just want to, uh, if you're ever interested in owning one of these pieces, uh, feel yes. free to to contact us uh, directly. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so these are all available for for sale. Um, you want to correct all that them. statement? I mean, not Riz most is not. Mine's well. I don't know. It uh, if you was not. Mine's is currently in a bidding war. <laughs> Whoa, really? <laughs> but is it between me auction, and Howard folks. Lyons? Yeah, yeah, game? yeah. Your 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 uh, your horse, extra horse, and his centaur. Oh yeah, depending on who has the most feasible changes. Yeah, that's who wins. Incredible. Um, we've already had some interest in Tyler's piece today too. So Sweet. If, you're, if you're interested, Ty Reyes has definitely already got a buyer. It's me. Um, but every, almost every one of the other paintings that you guys have painted so far, you've sold, a t uh, Tyler, you sold your Uhura. I and, did, I did. Uh, Ray, you sold your Deckard, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they're all, they're all available. Contact one of us if you're interested. Yeah, I think it, I've still got, well, I still got, you know, a bunch. I got that Bruce Campbell lying around and Luke and Ripley and, and good old Jack Burton, the Pork Shop Express. Oh, yeah. And if you also are new to this channel and you uh, wanted to check out some of our previous episodes, um, though, uh, you, you can go on, uh, catch us on YouTube, actually. Uh, you, we have them all on demand uh, there. So um, you just search for, Live brush, right? I mean, that's the uh, yeah, that's our YouTube, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, we do have an Instagram uh, account too, where we uh, share, you know, in our stories, we share our favorite artwork, um, and it's incredibly curated. <laughs> that means Ray does it. That's one of my favorite things, though. Is it's not something I do on my um, Instagram that much. Um, I mostly just post my own art, but. I love that we are starting to really post just anything we love to see. Cause I know yeah. people out there that are, you know, trying to become artists, sometimes it's hard to find all the great stuff. So when you see some of your favorite artists post art, they like, um, it's always really nice. I love to see that. Like when I, when there are artists I know out there posting some of their favorite art, I just get really excited. So I'm glad we're able to offer that as, as yeah, a yeah. feature. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, it, it's, I mean, we do it because we just love seeing awesome artwork and, you know, uh, you just have to, I, I, I was uh, talking actually to, uh, I was doing a lecture for the students of um, uh, Northern Michigan University on Wednesday. And uh, we were talking about how like uh, uh, the stories on Instagram and uh, do you know Steve uh, Hughes, uh, Tyler? I don't think so. Yeah, he's a great, great illustrator, man, an awesome painter. Um, I've shared a bunch of his stuff in my stories. Um, so he uh, invited me over to talk to his uh, illustration students. And so we were talking about Instagram and, and I had said jokingly, but super seriously that like, I, I go to Instagram to be humbled, you know, because there's so many good artists out. Yeah, and sure. I love sharing the stuff that humbles me, you know, and uh, I think it just goes back to us uh, our, our point that we always bring up every episode, which is don't work in a vacuum. You just can't, can't do it. Um, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it kind of goes back to what we used to do in like art school is yeah. that we had this one guy, um, Neil, um, yeah, yes, um, Neil. Yeah. yeah, he was the, uh, you know, all of us, I, I mean, we had like nothing, right? So we didn't have any art books. We had just had, we owned nothing, but art. What we art just had our wits and our good looks. Our, yeah, we just had by our wits. Um, but but Neil had this giant collection of art books in the art studio with us. Like all the books that were crazy expensive or super hard to find, um, he just had them sitting there. So we would just go over there and just drool over all these 
super odd, like Leindecker books that were impossible oh to find. God, or, yeah. I think yeah. he had that crazy giant Dean Cornwell book that no one yep, can he find did. nowadays. He did. He did. Um, so that that was like our, you know, God, oh man, I'm gonna sound like a stupid old old man, but that was like our Instagram for art, cool art back then was was books, kids. Was it was in books? <laughs> that's not. Was that I guy mean, saying like, the never ending story? I don't know. I never really watched the never ending story. Get out of here. I'm serious. I've never watched it really. I've seen the freaking furry, I don't know, dragon thing. Falcor? Yeah, the furry dragon. Falcor yeah. the luck dragon? Oh my you, god. You swine? God damn it. <laughs> F in the chat if you think Ray needs an education in the never ending story. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, but we, I mean, we did have hey, You haven't course. even seen Monster Squad. Okay, so yeah. who is the. <laughs> Different. Yeah. Very Kate. different. No. No. One, Monster you know, squad one, one yeah, one needed to exist before the other one was made. So Monster Squad came first, and then Never Ending Story was inspired by that. I think so. I think that was the case. I don't know. Probably yeah. not. Look it up. It's on Wikipedia. Just give me a second <laughs> to make me, uh, so I can finish up uh, my Wikipedia passage. I'll finish your painting first, Ray. I <laughs> <laughs> Touche, my friend. I'm trying to get that like uh, Kurt Russell kind of like swagger now. Oh man, yeah, it's hard. He's got that swagger. I know. Those eyes that are. What, what is it? What's the quote from the movie? Uh, eyes... It's like it's like when they say "old Jack." Uh, oh, it's oh eyes, from... they're they're closed by the sun, sharp as a hawk. Yeah. Close by the sun, but sharp as a hawk. Both yeah. predator and prey. And prey. Billy Zane. Oh man, I want one. Billy Zane, long-haired Billy Zane, really hard to find. Yeah, really hard to find. Much like Neil's art books, he was the Neil Yasami of uh, Tombstone. <laughs> you know, I wanted I wanted the fandom to be so good, and the Phantom. Really, oh my God, I wanted you know that what, to be what, like yeah. You know what would have made the Phantom good, folks? I don't know if you've seen the Phantom, but it's Billy Zane's swan song, I think. He was supposed to be the next big thing. After it. No. <laughs> um, but it was originally supposed to be Bruce Campbell, and that would have been the greatest movie. You're kidding ever. me? I didn't know that. Yeah, it's in his. He talks about his autobiography. Um, he was supposed to be in that, and something got in the way, and then what Billy Zane had said, but. Oh, what a misstep. No, no offense, oh, Billy Zane, if you're watching. Um, no offense. But, um, I loved you, Billy Zane. <laughs> I still do. <laughs> I loved you as that background character in Back to the Future 2. I loved you then. You were great. Oh, no, he was, was a background Back character? One? That was Elijah Wood. Wasn't that Elijah Wood? No, it, one, no it, was, it was Back to the Future 1. Yeah, it was Back to the Future 1. Yeah. The... And, yeah. What? Yeah. And oh um, Jason, what, J Jason, Jason Scott Lee, the guy who played Bruce Lee in the biopic. Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the goons in um, in Back Future Two. That's what I was mixing up. Billy Zane's in one, and then um, he's in two. Oh. And then yeah, El Elijah Wood's one of the kids at the diner in right in Back in Future two. two. Wait, so uh, uh, Jason Scott Lee's the guy who's like, you can't you you can't hoverboards don't go over the water. Yeah, right. no, without power. Oh, power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's all like crazy. Shakespearean. Uh, yeah, he really leaned into that role, man. <laughs> what a biff. I love that guy. That's how he got Bruce Lee. When they saw his performance doing that. We saw, we saw him in the background of Back to the Future 2. Do you want to play Bruce Lee? <laughs> the legend? I thought you were going to say... We saw you in the background of Back to the Future 2. Do you want to play the Phantom? In you know, <laughs> do you want to play the lead in this crazy expensive movie? Oh, oh man, we should you know watch the Phantom. We should start watching movies on this stream. Don't you think? I, Just I might want to do, you know, I honestly might want to do pulp like uh like uh 90s pulp like like Baldwin's the Shadow, you know. Oh man, oh, the Shadow. Oh my god, or, um, you know. Was it was it in the eighties or was it early nineties? Alan Cordman uh, movies. It might have been the eighties. I think it might have been the eighties. Yeah. 
Oh, we're really fizzling out here on the end of this stream, aren't we? <laughs> Just naming movies. Um, Ray, that, that painting is phenomenal. Um, I'm so glad that it will be in our house. Yep. Well, no, you know, it's going to be in Kate's side of the house. So you're going to have it to will be. Yeah. a fee of, uh, you know. I, I, I mean, think are you interested in outbidding? I mean, the fee, uh, Kate. the fee for viewing this is going to be very reasonable, Tyler. Um, and will okay. also help pay for having bought the piece. So. <laughs> I like that. I like that. So I won't sneak, I won't try to look at it. And it, I will wait for your permission to look at it. Is that's the agreement standing now. There you go. Is I will always avert my eyes to Ray's painting. Up in the chat if you think the law is the law. Okay. Uh, you guys want to uh, wind down? I think we should. Well, yeah, that's, man. That's, this is a good one. Right. Um, another shout that's out to Lightbox Expo Online. I hope everyone's yeah. having fun um, checking out all the streams and all the amazing stuff that's being available this weekend. And um, please come back and see us tomorrow at the same time. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we're going to be, I'm, I'm going to do something digital. And Ray, you're probably going to keep working on this, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tombstone's worth it. It is. It is worth yeah. the extra time. You know, maybe I'll do a digital piece and I'll do another tombstone piece. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> but I would rather do, I'd rather do something more on like the fantasy realm than I'm used to. Like some kind of creature, monster, dragon, goblin, who knows? It's going to be awesome, though. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah. So thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Ray. Uh, the thank indestructible you, Kate. Kate Welch. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Tyler. Keeping the ship afloat. Thanks to this incredible chat also. We've had a yeah. really, really yeah, good Yeah, thank you for folks. everyone. Thanks for awesome. coming and checking it out. Awesome. All right, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Have All right, everyone. Signing off. Have a good day. Okay. You're clear.